Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Junt midrange deck. Our deck is essentially a Junt adventure deck alongside a Planeswalker singleton deck smashed together, sprinkled in a couple scavenging oozes, and called it a day. So let's take a look at the entire list, starting out with our Angel Innkeeper. This is the main appeal for playing all these adventure creatures, and so we get access to a 1 mana 1 1 human peasant, and whenever we cast a creature spell that has an adventure, we get to draw a card. So it makes for a very powerful card draw engine especially alongside some of our cheaper adventure creatures like Falmar Knight, which is a 1 mana 1 1 death touch, and we're happy to just play it as a 1 drop if we have an innkeeper in play, otherwise we can use the profane inside adventure first for 3 mana, drawing a card at the cost of 1 life. Then we've got a singleton copy of Jolrael, a 2 mana 1 2 human druid from M21, and whenever we draw our second card each turn we get to make a 2 2 green cat creature token, so it synergizes very nicely with the card draw from Angel Innkeeper, and for 6 mana until end of turn, creatures we control have base, power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in our hands. Then we also have two copies of Paradise Druid to give us a bit of ramp and mana fixing, maybe get those planeswalkers in play a turn sooner. And two copies of Scavenging Ooze, reprinted in M21, a 2 mana 2-2 two, two Ooze, and for single green we can exile target card from a graveyard, and if it was a creature card we can put a plus one plus one counter on the Ooze, and we also gain one life, so it gives us access to a bit of main deck and graveyard hate, and our deck also has plenty of spot removal to keep feeding the Ooze additional creatures. And then we've got the full play set of Bonecrusher Giant, another adventure creature. We're typically going to use the adventure Stomp first, dealing 2 damage to any target. And then afterwards we get access to a 3 mana 4-3 that also deals damage to the opponent if they try and target it with a spell. Then at 3 mana we've got Murderous Rider, another adventure creature. We can use the Swift End adventure first, destroying a creature or a planeswalker at the cost of 2 life. And then we get access to a 2-3 life linker, which will draw us a card with the innkeeper. And then Lobstruck Beast can use the Heart's Desire adventure to make a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. And then we get access to a 3 mana 5-5 five, five that can't attack unless we control a 1-1 one, one creature. So works quite well with our Innkeeper and Falmar Knight, providing additional 1-1 one, one creatures in case the human token got dealt with. And then one copy of Arada, Heart of Keld, as a 3 mana 3-3 three, three elf warrior from M21. And as long as it's our turn, Arada has first strike, and we can look at the top card of our library anytime, and play lands from the top of our library as well, so it can provide a nice bit of card advantage there too. And for 6 mana, Arada gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of lands we control, so the opponent will have to respect that ability as well. And now we get to the Planeswalker part of the deck. We've got one copy of Vraska, Golgari Queen, can destroy no land permanents with converted mana cost 3 or less with the minus 3, and the plus 2 can draw a card if we want to sacrifice another permanent, so potentially synergizes nicely with Jolrael. We can easily sacrifice the 1-1 token from Lovestruck Beast if we have another 1-1 in play. Garrick Unleashed can make beast tokens with the minus 2, and can give a creature plus 3 and trample until end of turn with the plus 1 ability. Liliana can give a creature minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of cards in our graveyard. Works nicely with our Fabled Passage, and the plus one makes each player discard a card, and if the opponent can't, they lose three life. Then we've got Chandra Heart of Fire, can deal two damage to any target with the second plus one. The first plus one discards our hand, and then exiles three cards that we can play until end of turn. Then we've got Sarkhan the Masterless, can turn all our Planeswalkers into 4-4 Dragons, and can make a Dragon token himself with the minus three. We've got Nissa who shakes the world, which can produce a lot of additional mana and turn our lands into 3-3 creatures. We've got Vivian, Monster's Advocate. Since we've got a ton of creatures in the deck, we can play over the top with the passive ability, can make beast tokens with reach, trample or vigilance with the plus one, and the minus two can also help us search up additional creatures. And then topping off our curve at 6 mana, we've got Garrick Cursed Huntsman, can make wolf tokens with the 0 ability, or destroy a creature and draw a card with the minus 3, and the ultimate is also not too difficult to get to, giving all our creatures plus 3 plus 3 and trample permanently. And then finally Liliana, Dreadhorde General, makes zombie tokens with the plus 1, whenever any of our creatures dies we get to draw a card, and the minus 4 makes each player sacrifice 2 creatures, and the ultimate is also game winning. And then going over the mana base, we've got the full playset of Fabled Passage, alongside four forests, two mountains, and two swamps to search up, one copy of Castle Lochthwain as an additional card draw engine, 
and then all 12 shock lands with Blood Crypt, Overgrown Tomb, and Stomping Ground. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing Gigantha the Wellspring, so this could be a Ragdo Sacrifice deck. In which case, Scavenging Ooze is going to be quite good at exiling stuff from their graveyard. Turn 1 we can make a token with Beast, turn 2 maybe Stomp or play Ooze. Turn 3, play one of our creatures. So we've got a nice curve. And there we see the turn 1 Gutter Bones. Sample of Malice lets them scry 1. So ideally we save the Ooze until we can play and activate, exiling something relevant right away. And uh, yeah, I can just pass, maybe end of turn, stomp the gutter bones, and then next turn eat it with the scavenging ooze before they can get it back. Alright, so I'll have to stomp the gutter bones if I want to kill it, but I'm probably better off just stomping the wood strider here. Because if I stomp the gutter bones now, they can sack to the wood strider's ability, and then the giant would fizzle and we wouldn't get access to the 4 3 creature afterwards. but the Strider can also escape, so exiling that from the graveyard is pretty valuable. One of our better draws here would be the actual Innkeeper, since we have so many adventure creatures. Jolral could pair well with the adventure here. So next turn I can play Chandra to start dealing two damage to the Strider. In the meantime, I think I'm going to just play Lovestroke Beast and pass. And then next turn play Chandra, maybe the turn after Jolral plus adventure here. Could also shock myself to keep up Scavenging Goose's ability, but that doesn't seem necessary. There's Mayhem Devil. They could technically kill the Ooze if they want to sacrifice a whole bunch of creatures. And that's what they're going to do. So if I had shocked myself with the stomping ground, we could have eaten the gutter bones in response to the one damage and potentially save the ooze, but then of course our opponent would have taken a different line of play. Ooh, there's Innkeeper. Probably still play Chandra this turn, but the next turn we'll have a nice turn with Innkeeper and Jolral. And I'm happy enough playing defense with the Lovestroke Beast. Cauldron Familiar, probably the reason why they wanted to kill the Ooze so badly. And puts Gutter Bones in hand, another Ooze, nice timing. So we can kill the Familiar and exile it with the Ooze. Although then I wouldn't be able to play Innkeeper and Jolral this turn. It's probably still worth it to be honest. We all know how annoying the Cauldron Familiar can be. Could also play Innkeeper and play Falmar Knight here. It's also reasonable, I guess. And then next turn we'll have plenty more adventures to synergize with our Jolrile and Innkeeper. I'll probably shock myself now. And then I can potentially eat another 
creature with the ooze. There's a Woe Strider in there. Now the ultimate on Chandra is not too impressive in this deck. Alright, and our opponent concedes. Yeah, Scavenging Ooze is definitely a nice one against the Sacrifice decks. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Reasonable hand, double Innkeeper, might just play the Rider on turn 3 just to draw 2 cards. So turn 1 Forest, turn 2 I can fetch a Swamp, although then I won't have red mana. But I do need double black for Murder Strider. And then with the card draw from Innkeeper we're likely gonna find a red mana in case we pick up a red card. Opponent with a turn one Grazer. Alright, another Fable Passage, so now we can feel better about uh, fetching a Swamp. Opponent on Mono Green. Alright, it's a Mutate deck. I guess I'm more into just killing the Grazer now. I don't want the Mutate deck to snowball all these Mutate triggers. The good news is that the Innkeeper is probably not going to die anytime soon. Although Questing Beasts is pretty scary. If I play Joel Ryle, I can't play the Murder Strider here, so I'll probably have to just play Murder Strider, see what we draw. Another Innkeeper's nice. So I might end up needing double reds, so I might need to save Fable Passage to grab Mountain. Probably just take two and play Innkeeper. And then at the very least Vivian can shumblock the beast each turn with a token we make. Nissa, pretty good too. But I think I still prefer Vivian here. Because I don't really want to lose my land to the Questing Beast attacking. So we'll grab a mountain. And then Mono Green. Reach doesn't seem needed. I guess we'll go with Vigilance. I call, and Decoria answers. And then hoping to find something like a Lovestruck Beast to synergize with all these Innkeepers. There's a land on top. Let's see. Innkeeper only draws a card when we cast a creature spell, so doesn't work with the minus two from Vivian, since it just puts it on the battlefield. Yeah, I guess we're just playing Nissa. Diversity is our greatest strength. In this land, we are all and then I guess I don't care too much about the swamp. The land fights for us. Don't want to take two in order to play Jorail. We'll pass. Elder Gargaroth is definitely bad news. Although maybe they won't attack with it. 
Six mana, four Spicious Starex muted onto the Grazer. The good news is that Questing Beast doesn't kill me. And it also doesn't kill any of my Planeswalkers. So I probably trade for the Gargaroth. And then chump the Sterix with a Rider. Sterix could definitely be a bigger problem than Gargaroth long term, but yeah, this is kind of getting out of hand. And then keep the Innkeepers, hoping there's an adventure on top. All right, Bone Crusher Giants. So you get to play Jolrael. Play Bone Crusher. And there's a Lobstruck Beast. So we're kind of doing it. So. No real need to use the adventure first. And then I can play another Lobster Beast of the top. And we'll plus. And uh, pass a turn. Discard some lands. The ooze can help us gain some life. We've got some good blockers for the beast and the Sterix. Gem Racer can give a trample. So we'll have to fight over the graveyard with the opposing scavenging ooze. They might have another questing beast in hand, which is why they're still attacking. So there's only one creature left. They can even tap the Paradise Druids. Make Ooze a 7 7. That's fine. Alright, so where do we begin? Probably just play Falmar Knights. can also consider using Jolrel's ability here, since we have a million cards in hand. I wonder if we can just win the game on the spot. Well, it probably doesn't hurt to play another knight. And then Fable Passage can get another basic. Yeah, I can probably win the game here. I guess I can play Innkeeper, play Falmar Knights, and draw some more cards. 23 cards remaining, so I gotta be a little bit careful that I don't end up decking. Making new 
I guess we'll activate Jorail. All my creatures are 15-15. Play Ooze. And her opponent packs it in. Sweet. Getting to see Jorail's ability in action. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hand seems okay. If we don't have Innkeeper in play, I'll save the Falmer Knight for the adventure first. Lovestruck Beasts. I guess I'm fine to adventure. Facing a Blue Rat Spells deck. Brazen Borrower bounces the token. Alright, so it's a Teamer Adventure deck perhaps, a Reclamation. Just play the Beasts. I imagine Teamer Reclamation is probably a bad matchup. Don't have many ways to interact with the enchantments. And we don't have enough pressure to kill them before they assemble the combo. And there's the enchantments. Well, I can adventure the Falmar Knight and play it. Seems okay here. And that would let the beast attack. It gets countered. I could fetch another Swamp with Fabled Passage to let me use Castle, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna be using the Castle anytime soon. So probably fine just fetching a Mountain to mitigate how much damage we take off our mana and play Sarkon. So 10 mana. Is this an Explosion? Explosion for 6. Yeah, that's probably game over here. Well, only a few more months of Wilderness Reclamation in Standard at least. Second Reclamation. So they've got 14 mana here essentially. So they can Explosion for 10. Gonna Scry with Castle instead, I guess that's a good sign. Cycles a Trium. Gonna be a 4 4 shark from Shark Typhoon. Can trade for Sarkon or the Dragon. Trades for Sarkon. Got a bit of a clock going now with the dragon, with Chandra. Can play a giant next turn. But if they drew anything impactful here, we're probably dead.
Grow Spiral puts a Blast Zone in play. Blast Zone's not a big deal. Although it could be good if we had a bunch of Innkeepers in play. Again, Scries with the Castle, so they don't have a explosion in hand at least. Alright, they've got 8 mana floating. Put 4 counters on Blast Zone. Alright, it's not too bad. Hit for 4. Probably just play Liliana here. Could also stomp them and play Bone Crusher. <laughs> My army will envelop this world. All right, it's gonna be a Typhoon for five. Putrid, but effective. So if they've got an explosion, we're dead. If not, who knows, we'll get another turn. Drop to 15. The fact that they didn't attack our Planeswalker is probably not a good sign. Although they had enough mana to kill us with an explosion without the attack. All right, there it is, an explosion for 20. GG's, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one Innkeeper, turn two Falmer Knights. Facing a Kahira deck. So an elemental deck, it looks like. Next turn we can Murder Strider. Alright, there's Questing Beast again. Probably waits until uh, their turn to kill it in case they have a second beast in hand. I miss out on one damage from Innkeeper, but it's probably worth it. Alright, mutates a great horn. I guess that's fine. I guess it could just be a mono green beast deck instead. Would love to draw another adventure creature here. And there we go. So this turn probably just Innkeeper. And then I can destroy the Great Horn. And then next turn start drawing cards with Murderous Riders. So it seems fine to just kill it. Now if they have another questing beast, we're gonna fall pretty low. And there it is. But a Bone Crusher Giant to the rescue. Yeah, I could shock myself to one play Nissa and chum the questing beast with a land. Which is reasonable, because then we have a Nissa in play. But just playing a Bone Crusher and drawing two cards might be better. I will be dead if they can remove the Bone Crusher Giant.
but a mono green deck with Kahira is not going to have too much removal, presumably. Gem Racer makes Gracer a 4 4. Beast attacks. They could wait until they put Kahira in play to make this a 5 5 so it doesn't trade for the Giant. So that's maybe what they're considering. Alright, we gotta put up some defenses here. I would like to get Nissa in play to get access to more mana. Although the 3 3 won't be on defense if I then play Murder Strider afterwards, which could be an issue. But I think I still go for it. So we'll play Nissa. Keeping Overgrown Tomb untapped. Plus on the swamp. If we can untap here, we'll be in great shape. Elder Gargroth. Seems like a popular card today. So that's an easy block. And then can double block this way so I don't die. Another Falmar Knight. Seems like a good place to start. Play Beast as a 5-5. Five five. There's Ooze to gain a bit of life. And I can play Bone Crusher too. Perfect. I can untap a, a black land here so we keep a Murder Strider. I guess I can just kill the Gargroth here to be honest. Seems safe enough. Gobble up two creatures with ooze. And her opponent explodes. Sweet. So once again, pretty low on life thanks to the questing beast, but able to stabilize thanks to the card advantage from Innkeeper, the extra mana from Nyssa, and the removal from uh, Murderous Rider. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands okay, nothing special, but I've got a curve, I've got good mana. Can maybe ramp into Liliana thanks to the Paradise Druids. And a turn one Ozolith, don't see that every day. I'll probably hang on to the Falmar Knights for the time being. Opponent on a Sultai deck. Stone Cold Serpents, not bad. Does have protection from Rada and a few of our planeswalkers. Take two. So I can play Rada, see if there's a land on top I get to play for free. And pass the turn. Next turn I could play Chandra, maybe kill the Stone Coil. Or the Paradise Druids so they don't get any counters on Ozolith. Polukranos is a scary one too. And Garruk on top. 
could also just pass with Murder Strider up, and then if they try and fight with Polychronos, we can kill their response. Although then the Ozolith is gonna come into play. I think I'm okay just killing the Paradise Droid here. And maybe next turn we can clean up shop with Liliana's Minus. Ram through Harada. Alright, so Chandra down, but Liliana's looking good. Although they will get a bunch of counters on their Ozolith here. Ooh, they've got another creature. That makes the Liliana plan a lot less impressive. So now I'm thinking we can just play a Falmar Knight as a 1-1 blocker. And then Murder Strider, Polychronos end of turn maybe. Or in response to a fight. Yeah, let's do that. Liliana plus doesn't seem great. Cycles a Triome. And ram through with the Stonequill Serpents. Guess we'll kill the Stonequill instead. And that sets up our Liliana minus four. Now, Polychronos, I think, is pretty good against Death Touch since it prevents the damage, so we wouldn't be killing Polychronos here, but still happy to prevent a damage. And then Liliana can clean things up. I am the master here. They do get seven counters on Ozolith, but that's okay. Ooze can gain a bit of life back. A trample creature would be an issue. Instead it's another Polychronos. Makes it a 13-13. Could be an issue. They can fight once next turn. If they draw land potentially twice. So I just need to make as many blockers as I can. So if I Garrick minus... It still doesn't uh, give me any additional loyalty. So probably got to start with Nissa. Make as much mana as possible. <laughs> Could play the Falmer Knights. Or I can keep the forest untapped and then eat twice with Scavenging Ooze, which might be better. The land shall conquer you. Of course, if our creatures die, we get to draw a lot of cards, so that's not too bad. And they're gonna start by fighting the Scavenging Ooze. So if I were to tap the forest to gain life with Ooze now, and they have a forest in hand, they can fight a zombie and kill me. Or can they? I guess Polychronos loses a bunch of counters here. So maybe it is fine to gain a 2 life. Yeah, because if they fight a zombie and a Ooze, they will lose quite a few counters. And get to draw a card. Alright. Guess I'll start by drawing a card. 
Paradise Druids. Stomp Olucranos. Play Giants. And Paradise Druids. Alright. Seems okay. Plenty of blockers now for Pulchronos. Can maybe start attacking next turn by giving my creatures trample with Garrick. Galloping Lizrog. Nice. So that's gonna get a lot of counters. 17, 17 and trample. Although we do have minus 4 available here. Don't think I need to take any risks. Get out of my way. And then uh, animate the forests. The land shall come for you. I like this thing. Pretty cool deck from our opponent. First time that Ozolith has done anything ever. Sweet, so our Jun midrange deck did pretty well. We lost to Team Reclamation, which I imagine is a pretty horrid matchup. Maybe in best of three you can put a bunch of discard in the sideboard, maybe some disenchants like Thrashing Brontodon or Cinder Vines, and things get a little bit better. But generally speaking, against combo decks that uh, don't necessarily rely on board presence or creatures, we're going to have a hard time. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.